Some really exciting news announced by OpenAI earlier this week. They introduced an API connecting to chat GPT. And as you can see on this webpage, developers can now integrate chat GPT and whisper models into their apps. So this is gonna be huge, huge. Tons of use cases. I'm starting to think of my own and I'm gonna share one of them with you and show you kind of the mechanics behind it and how I'm able to connect it. And I'm, I'm just super excited about it. Uh, so let's, uh, let's go down further in this article and you can see a few other use cases by uh, Snap, uh, Instacart, Quizlet, and a few other ones. Uh, and down here is where the code snippet is. So, so you can test this out for yourself. So before I jump into the code, what I want to do is show you what it looks like on potentially your website or, or just somebody else's website. So you can kind of see how, how it can look. So here is a vacation rental website and I'm looking at a property of a beautiful property here in, in La Jolla. And uh, you can see there's a bunch of uh, information about this rental. And down here, I have a chat bot. It's one built with Typebot, which I highly recommend. I am prompted with ask a question about this property. So just for fun, what we're gonna do is, is uh, ask it some questions that we can see based off of this description here. So uh, let's, uh, let's just copy this and ask it, um, is this rental overlooking the ocean at Wenensee Beach. Yes, Blue Water La Jolla Oceanfront is an oceanfront vacation rental that overlooks Wenensee Beach in La Jolla with spectacular views. Really cool. Uh, now let's ask it something about proximity to some local attractions here. So let's ask it uh, how close it is to San Diego Airport. How close is this rental to the airport? Now I'm not specifying which airport, I'm just simply putting airport in there. And here is the answer I'm expecting back. So it says the San Diego airport is approximately 10.4 miles, which matches here, away from the this particular La Jolla oceanfront vacation rental. Pretty cool. And let's ask it something about the check-in time. So let's type in what time is check-in. Check-in time is at 4 p.m. So it checks out. This is really cool. I'm, I'm super excited. I think the use case is really interesting for for um, if not a replacement, at least a complement or a supplement to uh, to FAQs. Anyways, this is uh, kind of like the simple demo that I'm trying to show. So so now I'm going to jump over to to Typebot, so this chatbot builder, and then show you how I'm connecting to the ChatGPT API, uh, so that you can try it for yourself and mess around with it. And hopefully you can share how you're using uh, chat GPT with your chatbots. So I'm gonna hop back to Typebot. And if you're not familiar with Typebot, I highly recommend it. It's, it's, a super, it's a really simple user interface. It's very intuitive to use. And it's re really flexible as you're gonna see in just a moment. Uh, so here's a very simple chatbot sequence that I have. So. Uh, first, we start off with the uh, text asking the user to ask a question about the property, as we saw up here, right? And then we collect the question as, as an input from the user, and we save it as a variable called question. And then from here, this is where we do the post call to the chat GPT API. So before we go any further, you need an account to use uh, OpenAI and you also need an API key. So in order to get your API key, uh, you go over to your account, uh, settings, and then go to API keys, and then you create a new secret key. Once you have that, then we can go back to this article and then use the code snippet that they provided. So the URL where we're gonna make the call, the API call is this one here. So let me open up this block. It's like an API block. And this is where you're gonna put your, your open AI uh, API URL. And then you're gonna pass in the headers. So going back to the code snippet, you're gonna pass in two headers, the authorization along with bearer plus your API key. 
and then the co content type, and then your uh, the this uh, application type, was, which is application slash JSON. So going to the headers, you can see uh, the key value pair here. And I'm gonna change this after the demo. And uh, this is the content type application JSON, right? So pretty simple so far. And then the last piece is to pull in this uh, JSON. So going back to TypeBot, you're gonna open up the body, enable custom body, and then pass in that code. So this is where you're going to send the information uh, to ChatGPT in order to uh, have some data to draw upon to then answer back to a user's question. So this is um, th th this takes like a little bit of formatting, but let me show you how it works if you were to just uh, kind of uh, interact with it in uh, in the OpenAI uh, Playground account. So if you head over to uh, the platform.openai.com forward slash playground, you'll see something like this. And up here, I just wanna draw your attention to this get started prompt. It says, enter an instruction or select a preset and watch the API respond with a completion that attempts to match the context or pattern you provided. So here we're trying to provide the context to the chat GPT model so that I can say, okay, this is like the information that I have, um, the specific information that I want to draw upon in order to, to make my, my answer back to the user. So what I did was really, really simple. Uh, and you can kind of refine you know, how, how specific you want your, your data to be for ChatGPT to then respond back to, to the user. So let me, let me show you an example here. So here you can see the description, right? For this, for this property. So I literally just copied this whole text and then went back to the playground and pasted it in here. So why don't I just do that now? So let me copy all of this, go back to the playground and paste it in here. So you'll have to do a little bit of cleanup, right? Uh, for instance, here, this is, these are buttons. So got rid of that. This is the name of the property. So you, you probably should um, include that this is a name of the property. And let's see what else looks kind of funny. I think that's it. I think this is the only thing that I adjusted. So I'll put um, so the name of the rental. Later on, I'm going to show you how to, how to make um, this data more specific so that ChatGPT can then respond more specifically. But this, this seems to work just, just fine. After this, what you wanna do is submit. Actually, we wanna view the code and then we wanna grab this prompt. So it's quite long, bear with me here. So you wanna copy this and then go back to TypeBot and then within this key value pair that you see here, this content and then this a string, this is where you're going to add your, your um, string that you just copied in the previous step. So a couple of things that I want to note here, the the triple hashtag is, or the triple hash or triple pound sign, that's um, a way to separate the code visually in this uh, playground, or I, I think just in general um, to separate the code visual. It, it doesn't do anything. It, it, doesn't, have, it doesn't have any like code uh, significance. Uh, so let me show you what that looks like. Um, so you could get an idea of how uh, of how this um, API responds. So for instance, um, we can do the triple hashtag, and that's just the visual separation, right? And then here I can ask it, you know, what time is check in, and then click on submit, and then it responds, right? So this is the same behavior that we want to uh, import into the type bot. This is this is pretty much it. So we want to feed it this information about that vacation rental in, in this particular example. And then we want to pass in at the end, the question passed in by the user, right? So let's head back to ChatGPT. And here is where we're gonna pass in the question from the user. So we're, sa we're saving it as a variable. So I'm gonna hop out of here and show you where it's at, right? So first we ask the user to ask a question about this 
property. Then we collect that question as a question variable. And then we take that this variable called question and then we pass it over to, let me expand this. And then we pass it all the way at the very end so, so that ChatGPT can provide an answer back. So that's, that's how you make it happen. So let's go ahead and run a test here. And let me get rid of that. And we can just say, you know, what time is check-in once again, test a request. And here is the answer. So it, it works as expected. So going back to formatting the responses, you can get a lot more granular, a lot more specific. So let's go back to the playground. So here, what you can do is also insert a prompt to ChatGPT to consider when it responds back to the user. So you can say like, um, respond back in a friendly tone. Uh, I tried going as far as like, you know, respond uh, in a tone with uh, Southern Bell charm. It didn't quite work, uh, but friendly tone, I, I guess, I guess it worked. I couldn't really tell. Um, another thing that you can do is Tell it to only answer based off of the information that you provided, which is pretty cool. So for instance, you can put in this command and also don't answer questions other than the given information. In that case, let me kind of correct this here. In that case, just say, sorry, I don't understand. Please ask questions related to this rental property. So we'll test that in just a moment. But um, so that's that's something that you might want to add to to make sure that the information or the responses are in line directly with the information that you uh, provided chat gpt another thing is if you want to provide specific information then it's good to uh, to add it and a way to do that for example could be with these uh, triple hashes and just say uh, and, and kind of do it like in a question answer um, type of um, format. So if uh, check-in is at 6 p.m. or maybe it's not in here, but you want to include it, then you would, you know, put it uh, put it in here. Or if you want to include some other information, uh, maybe a, a bit more detailed, then you could format it uh, down here. So that's something else to to consider. So I'm going to get rid of this and I'm going to go back to uh, view code. And let's just copy all of this once again, go back to Typebot, and I'm going to override what we currently have. So get rid of that, paste it in here. Okay, so let's test it out. So I'm gonna ask it a, like an irrelevant question. Actually, let me go back here because this code should probably not be updated yet. So let me put, um, who is La Chupa Cabra? <laughs> And let's see what it responds. Sorry, I don't understand. Please ask questions related to this rental property. Oh, okay. So I guess it updated. So that's that's good. That's what we expected it to do. So that's uh, that's pretty much it in a nutshell. So so head over to the docs here. Um, I'll provide this this link to this page, and it's it's super interesting. Um, this is constantly evolving, as you can imagine. Um, the models are have been updated, so you can see here. Um, today we're releasing this uh, 3.5 turbo uh, version, so it's it's really exciting stuff. Um, please share any use cases that you're using it. Uh, this is a pretty simple, as you can see by the flow here. It's super simple. Um, what I plan to do in the future is to uh, have one chat chatbot to then. Uh, use on, let's say, a vacation rental uh, website to then provide contextual information on each vacation rental within one type bot. So I'll be like pulling information uh, from one endpoint to then say, hey, ChatGPT, answer uh, any uh, user queries based off of the information for, for this cabin or for this rental and just make it make it like more streamlined and have and have one type bot to then answer all the questions from all the different rental properties. Anyways, uh, drop a comment. I'd love to hear from you. This is really cool stuff. Uh, and see you on the next one.